I wanted to talk a little bit today about an article that uh, I was uh, privileged to co-author with Francis Pelleggi and Jill Agro of Eckerd Siemens uh, that appears this month in the Delaware Journal of Corporate Law entitled Inspecting Corporate Books and Records in the Digital World, the Role of Electronically Stored Information. Uh, this deals traditionally, typically with uh, Section 220 cases for the Delaware General Corporation Law which provides limited rights for shareholders to get corporate information. However, when you take a look at the statute, uh, some of the language in the statute for in today's business terms uh, seems archaic, obsolete, and confusing. Uh, in particular, the reference to books and records uh, that the shareholder is entitled to inspect if there is a proper purpose. In today's digital world, we don't deal with books, we don't deal with records per se, we deal with information and so in a digital world there is no such thing as a book uh, rather there's an electronic repository of information and in today's digital world over 90 percent of information is created modified stored and deleted in electronic format and a very very small percentage of that ever gets reduced to paper so while a, a section 220 uh, action is a gathering tool for shareholders to get information uh, related to their positions uh, as shareholders in a company. The unanswered question uh, in terms of the statute and the case law is whether the shareholders are entitled to electronically stored information or what is commonly referred to as ESI. Uh, there is no definitive authority in Delaware about whether ESI is a subset of information that a corporation must produce in response to a Section 220 demand. Uh, there are decisions that say a corporation must produce email uh, there are other decisions that say the corporation doesn't have to produce email. Uh, but this isn't just about email, and actually that's one of the important things to understand in terms of the terminology. Uh, ES not, ESI is not just email. Email is the container that holds ESI. It's the container that holds the data or the information. So what we're dealing with is content versus container. And this is a universal problem that's generally misunderstood in a lot of situations. Emails, spreadsheets, databases are containers for holding information or data. Uh, ESI is the information that is the subject of the demand. So in a 220 action, which you're looking for information, you're looking for information irrespective of the container. Uh, if the data resides in an email, in a spreadsheet, in a database, then that's where you would go to look for the information. Uh, by way of example, in a 220 action, if a shareholder was looking for a company's stockholder list, they're entitled to get that information. But, for instance, if the stockholder list was created electronically and kept in electronic form every day and generated that way, modified, and at the end of the day, the chief information officer would take the form, attach it to an email, and send it to the chief operating officer, and then delete the information from the server, you'd be hard pressed to say, well, that's an electronic format and you're not entitled to that information. If that becomes the official record of the company, then you, if the shareholder requested the stockholder list, you would go to the email with the attachment. Um, so that's why we took a look at this, at this statute and thought it'd be good to point this out as, as an inconsistency and suggest that maybe this is time, this is the time to make some changes or to reflect the current view of the world in today's uh, case law. We also uh, pointed out that the Federal Rules of Civil Procedure were changed in December 2006 to reflect today's business environment, in particular referencing electronically stored information. Uh, so now is probably the time to take a look at what uh, the Delaware statute says. We also pointed out that Delaware is not alone. The article includes references to 50 states in the District of Columbia where this, there, we did a survey and showed that there is no informative case law on requiring the inclusion or exclusion of electronically stored information uh, in response to a shareholder's inspection demand. So, and as in closing, this concept or this problem is not unique to just Section 220 cases. In the alternative entity statutes like se uh, Section 17305 for limited partnerships and Section 18305 for limited liability companies, which also provides similar rights to access entities' information. This same language is used, and so this is a change that would affect not only the Section 220 cases, but also 
the alternative entity statutes.